The Jupiter airdrop today was the biggest airdrop of 2024, airdropping over $750 million to airdrop participants. But what I don't hear many people talking about is the fact that this is only one of four Jupiter airdrops that are yet to come. This is because only 25% of the total airdrop allocation was scheduled for the first airdrop, meaning there are three more airdrops totaling over $2 billion yet to come. So in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can get access to these remaining three airdrops by interacting with the Jupiter protocol. And I'll be running you through my strategy for making sure I get access to these future airdrops. So today was a monumental day but the fun is not over quite yet. I think today is another reminder of just how lucrative airdrops are in crypto. 2024, as I said a few weeks ago at the start of the year, is going to be the golden year for crypto airdrops. Probably the biggest year for crypto airdrops in history and maybe the last big year for crypto airdrops in history. So you need to make sure you're maximizing this period. It doesn't get better than this from a crypto farmer perspective. Being able to just interact, make a few swaps on an exchange and get access to today what was over a $10,000 airdrop for some people is absolutely mind-blowing. And that's exactly why on this channel, I do my best to give you the best airdrop alpha. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and click that post notification bell so you don't miss a single airdrop opportunity. Tomorrow, after this video, I'm going to be posting my ultimate airdrop guide for 2024, detailing all the airdrops that I'm farming. And then a couple days later, I'm going to be posting a Solana airdrop guide, which dives into the next Solana ecosystem airdrop. So lots of amazing airdrop content coming your way. Also some other crypto alpha coming your way as well. So to make sure you don't miss it, click that subscribe button. And without further ado, let's get into the Jupiter airdrop guide. And I also want to quickly say thank you to all of my loyal followers who watch all of these videos, who interact with the videos. Your support means so much to me. And this is the reason why I'm bringing this crypto alpha to you every day, because I want to help you succeed in the market. And hopefully in a couple of years, we've all made it and we can celebrate together. That is my mission. So let me know in the comments below what country you're watching from. I'm really interested to see what different countries my loyal followers are actually watching these videos from. So now let's get into Jupiter. Obviously, it was a massive airdrop. You can see Jupiter is valued around the time of recording around $6 billion. There was a little bit of FUD on launch day surrounding uh, the team actually taking profits and selling tokens. That, in my opinion, is just noise on Twitter. The reality is it's the biggest airdrop of the year. It's an absolutely successful launch, in my opinion. Over $6 billion FTV puts Jupiter as the number one ranked protocol on Solana and actually the 87th ranked project in crypto. So it was a huge, huge success. Congratulations to everyone who received the airdrop. I did receive a small airdrop. I didn't use Jupiter a lot, but I did use it a few times uh, when I was playing around on Solana. And if you haven't already, make sure to check your Phantom wallets or your other Solana wallets to actually check if you've received an airdrop because chances are, if you've done swapping on Jupiter, which was pretty much the best aggregator for the last year or so, you would have also received an airdrop as well. So make sure to check that out. Now, in terms of Jupiter's strategy here, they're using these airdrops as a way to bootstrap and attract new users onto the platform. So airdrops, as we know, are a community growth tool. You're giving people People access to tokens in exchange for using the platform. And this is highlighted in an article that they posted called Grow the Pie Update Number One, where they said that the point of the community airdrop is to expand the ecosystem. Now, in this blog post, they did announce a couple of key facts relating to their airdrop tokenomics, which are very important. They said that there'll be 10 billion dupe tokens. Out of that 10 billion, 40% will be allocated to the community. That is massive. It's literally one of the biggest, most aggressive airdrop distributions I've ever seen in crypto. 40% going to the community over four rounds, meaning we've seen the first 25% and then the remaining 75% out of the $4 billion worth of tokens set aside for airdrops is yet to come, which is absolutely amazing for airdrop farmers. So what is going to happen next? Well, we don't know exactly when the next airdrop is going to take place. However, now is the time that if you miss this airdrop, you can start preparing for these remaining three airdrops by interacting with the protocol. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the steps that you can take 
to make sure that you do make the snapshot for these next airdrops, which is obviously going to be a multi-billion dollar airdrop. If the Jupiter price maintains um, even half of what it is now, it's still going to be in the billion dollar range, uh, which is absolutely huge. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to give you some nuance in terms of how you can actually execute this strategy uh, to make sure uh, that you do end up qualifying. So for the Jupiter airdrops, I'm pretty much following the exact same strategy that would have netted you the original airdrop with the snapshot being taken in November 2023. And that is basically just genuine interaction with the features of the platform. I'll run you through each of these features now and tell you how you can go about things to make sure you do make that snapshot. The first thing is utilizing their swap function. This is basically the number one function that's been available pretty much since the dawn of the exchange. And this essentially enables you to swap, uh, getting the best swap rates over a variety of Solana AMM. So it's essentially an aggregator. It'll aggregate to get you the best rates across the ecosystem. You can swap USDC, Solana, any other coin bonk that's available in the Solana ecosystems. Also other tokens that have been bridged across via bridges like Wormhole on the Solana blockchain as well. So obviously to swap on Jupiter, you will need some tokens in your Solana wallet. It is compatible with a multitude of Solana native wallets and also multi-chain wallets. But my personal favorite is of course the Phantom wallets, but with a PH. I'll leave a link in the description below to one of my threads, which has the link to Phantom and some of the other uh, features mentioned in today's video. But it's my favorite wallet because it's the cleanest UI. In fact, I think it's one of the best, if not the best wallets in crypto. And I really enjoy using it. So obviously to get funds onto that wallet, you will need uh, to on-ramp funds either into crypto or onto the Solana blockchain. If you have funds on another chain, you can actually bridge via Jupiter's native bridge. As you can see here, you can use Wormhole uh, or the Comparator bridge, and you can basically bridge assets across any chain. So if you've got assets on Ethereum, like USDC, and you want to swap that on the Jupiter exchange via the Solana network, you can do that. Of course, if you don't have funds already in a MetaMask wallet, the easiest thing to do would simply be to withdraw straight to your Phantom wallet using the Solana network from a centralized exchange. If you do need a centralized exchange to on-ramp uh, onto, because let's say you have a credit card or a debit card and you want to get fiat money into crypto, you can use an exchange like Bybit or BitGet, as you can see in front of you, and this will enable you to on-ramp funds and they have native withdrawals for Solana and many other tokens to the Solana network, which is very, very handy. By the way, if you do want to sign up for BitGet and support the channel at the same time, you can use my referral link in the description below. But for using that link, you'll get access to an exclusive $10 airdrop alongside, just for signing up, alongside a $1,000 welcome pack. So if you sign up using that link exclusively, you can get access to the airdrop and the welcome pack where you need to complete a bunch of signup tasks like identity verification, first time depositing, first time trading, and their trading challenge, and you can stack up to $1,000. They also have a fortune wheel, which you can spin in order to win daily USDT and crypto prizes, which they called lucky coins. So if you don't want to spin the wheel and try your luck to earn some additional rewards, you can do so using the link below. Once you sign up for a BitGet account, you will then be able to on-ramp cryptocurrency either via their credit debit card on ramp, which also gives you up to a 50% rebate, which is very, very cool. If you're lucky enough to win, you can get 50% of your on ramping cost essentially for free, um, but also is zero fee. If you don't win, it's still zero fee. And then of course you can off ramp straight to the Solana network. So that's there for anyone that wants it. Uh, if not, if you already have funds on the exchange or once you've completed that, uh, let's get on with the rest of the tutorial here. So swapping is, is pretty simple. As I said, you're swapping USDC, SOL, any other asset that you want to swap. There's pretty much two ways you can go about this. The first way you can go about this is just making Jupiter one of your primary exchanges. So this is something I'll do when I airdrop farm. Uh, if I'm doing a native swap that I plan on doing anyway, I'll simply just make a concerted effort to use particular exchanges, in this case, Jupiter, when I am conducting those swaps. That's the first thing, because then it's not costing you additional fees. You're essentially just doing what you would have done anyway, right? And then the second option is to actually use additional funds that you put onto Jupiter just to build up your trading volume on the exchange, which can accelerate things, but also cost you a bit more in fees. So let's say you have $1,000 of USDC, you can use Jupiter uh, and then or $10,000, whatever, you can essentially swap it to USDT, back to USDC, and then back to your exchange or just keep it in your wallet. You'll pay Solana gas fees. You might pay a tiny bit of slippage. You can adjust your slippage in the top right. 
maybe you'll lose a couple dollars, but that's all for the sake of building up volume to potentially land the next airdrop, right? So obviously the more volume you build up, the higher chance you have of receiving a bigger airdrop. So you can use either one of these strategies as long as you're being consistent with your swaps over time. You don't just want to swap once and that's it. This is one of those things where you want to put on your airdrop calendar. And I always recommend having an Excel checklist or a Google Sheets checklist that you use to check off these steps. You want to put it in your regular routine. You use and interact with Jupyter and other Solana protocols regularly, um, which is obviously going to enable you to tick off the consistency box when it comes to the airdrop snapshot requirements. Because volume is one prerequisite, but oftentimes consistency and frequency of trading is another one. Whether this is once a week, once every two weeks, that's fine as long as you're consistently doing it. Step number two is setting a limit order. So this essentially enables you to set a predetermined level that you'll either be purchasing or selling a token at. This is particularly useful when it comes to, let's say if you're trading a meme coin or even Solana and you wanna implement profit taking, you can set the level that you wanna sell or buy the asset at. So this could be used for DCAing or profit taking. So this is obviously a great way for you to manage your positions if you want to do it a bit more passively and also, of course, use one of the key features on Jupiter. Step number three is using the DCA function. So what you can do here is basically, let's say if you want to buy Solana, you can choose the predetermined period you want to purchase Solana across, whether that's every single minute, whether that's every hour, day, week, or month. And you can actually DCA into a position over time. This is especially handy if you're looking to build up a long-term position. Of course, you can do this via setting limit orders, but DCA, I think, is quite good for those you know wanting to build long-term positions or sell a long-term position over time. Let's say if we're in the heat of the bull run, you don't want to do manual trades every day, but you want to take profits on your Solana position, you can do that, which is absolutely uh, amazing. It's super, super functional. But setting a DCA strategy is another thing you can do actually on Jupiter in order to build up volume. Now, in terms of building up volume, whether you do it through DCAing, limit orders, or swaps, technically it's the same, but just to be safe, I like to hit all the features whenever I am interacting with a protocol and going for an airdrop. You never know. That may be a snapshot requirement that they put out in the future that you need to have done X amount of volume on DCAs, limit orders, and swaps. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know exactly what they're going to ask for the airdrop. But when it comes to airdrop farming, there is a lot of educated guesswork that goes in. And that's why I'll make sure to use a variety of features on the platform. Another feature that you can use for step number four, which I alluded to earlier in the video, is the bridge feature. So this basically enables you to get assets via the comparator bridge, wormhole, or on-ramp from, let's say, Ethereum, Optimism, Base, BNB, Polygon, etc., to the Solana network or back to the EVM chains. And this is great because obviously you need a way to on-ramp if you even want to use Jupiter, but it's easy to have this as an off-ramp. And because Jupiter is an aggregator, so it has these bridges built in, it kind of gives you one easy interface that you can interact with to in order to bridge assets, which is absolutely amazing. Before I get into step five, which is, in my opinion, one of the most effective strategies for building up volume, I want to give a quick shout out to one of the official show sponsors, which is Massa. And Massa is building the leading ZK data marketplace and network in crypto. Now, the reason why uh, I thought it was a good thing to bring up in today's video is because of the fact that they have a current airdrop quest, a free airdrop quest, by the way, for you to take part in that could land you a nice airdrop when it launches. Now, maybe it's not going to be as big as a Jupiter airdrop, but it still could be a decent one considering all you need to do to actually get access to the airdrop is follow them on Twitter, join their Discord, join their Telegram, and subscribe to their newsletter. Free to complete, it allows you to mint your Massa airdrop badge, and then those Badges will enable you to get access to a token distribution, aka airdrop in Q1 2024, once the network is live. So if you want access to Massa tokens, instead of having to buy them on the open market, which you can't anyway right now, you can get access to them for free via completing the airdrop. And they're building a very cool product aiming to be the leading ZK data marketplace and network in crypto. So there's a link in the description below if you want to do that. Probably takes a few minutes and could potentially give you access to a nice airdrop. Now let's get on with the final step. And I said this is a way to build up uh, pretty heavy volume and, and that's through perpetuals. There's no secret that perpetuals are an effective way to build up volume. The only caveat is it does involve an element of risk whenever you're introducing leverage. So you do have to be very, very careful. But for those that are more experienced or those that understand how to hedge 
uh, properly and maybe you need to do some re more research on that before you, you test this out. Um, Perpetuals can be a great strategy for building up volume. So you've got the Sol, ETH and the Bitcoin perps available on the exchange. You can either go long or you can go short. I mean, it depends how you like to trade. If you've got a long position, you can head short. Yes, there are some funding fees, but you can also see the borrow rate per hour. Just be careful of this. When funding's high, you'll be paying a lot. Right now, it's actually more expensive to long than it is to short due to the current funding rates. And you can essentially choose the amount of leverage, the size of your long, and once you connect your wallet, you can open a long. Same for the short side. You select the size of your short. You can toggle the leverage and you can set a position and it will show you the fee, the borrow rate and the available liquidity for that position. So once again, a little bit riskier, but the good thing about doing this is that it, it, it's easier to build up volume essentially through perps, but just make sure you're implementing proper risk management whenever you trade leverage. It's super, super important. You'll also notice this earn tab here. If you click on the earn tab, this is a bonus step for you. You can actually use the GLP pool, which is, I guess, similar to how GMX would work in order to get access to revenue sharing from the base Jupyter platform itself. So what this is, is it's an index fund of Sol, ETH, Wrapped, Bitcoin, USDC, and USDT as a liquidity pool. You can buy and sell GLP here in order to get access to this pool. I don't know if this will factor into the airdrop, but it might. And for that reason, I'm staking a tiny bit of capital in GLP in conjunction with the active trading on the network. Now, a couple of really important things now we've gone through the key steps for Jupiter. The first important thing is that you're paying attention to new products that launch. We recently saw them announce the launch of their new launch pad. And I'm sure just like they have over the past few months, they're going to be shipping more and more products throughout 2024. Now, typically these platforms want to incentivize the usage of new products. And for that reason, I recommend following them and staying up to date. Of course, this channel is going to help you wherever I can, but I can't always give you the latest updates. So the best thing to do is just follow Jupiter on Twitter, join the Discord, Telegram, etc. You'll get access to the new updates. And those updates are oftentimes going to be some of the best ways to ensure that you're eligible for a snapshot in conjunction with the steps that I've given you now, which I believe are all the current steps that you're able to complete at the time of watching this video. But if I can't update you in a few months and they've launched a new DEX or a new feature or their launch pads live, then you definitely want to start interacting with these, these new functions. And the second important thing to factor in here is this airdrop's likely not going to be over the next couple of quarters. So there's no rush with this, but the reason I'm telling you about it is because time can catch up with you. So I recommend factoring this into your airdrop plans over time. Once again, using a checklist and putting it in there so you're consistently going to be able to build up that volume over the coming months. What I don't want is in a year's time, you come back and you say, Mars, why don't you tell me about Jupiter? I'd rather you waste the next six months or one year farming on some of these protocols, feeling like you're not making anything and then finally getting rewarded than me not giving you an opportunity, right? So yes, there are more time sensitive airdrops. In tomorrow's video, I'm going to give you some of the more time sensitive airdrops. However, it would also be remiss of me not to give you a quote unquote early opportunity, which I believe is Jupiter, given the fact that the next airdrop might not be for six months or a year. It genuinely might not be for a year, but you want to be prepared. And I always want to give you, I'd rather give you access early than too late, basically. So those are my top two tips for Jupiter. Just be consistent and patient with it. Don't prioritize it over other airdrops. There are more time sensitive airdrops. As I said, tomorrow, I'm going to give you some of those more time sensitive airdrops and always keep up to date with the latest products that are actually announced for Jupiter. So that's that. That's my Jupiter airdrop guide. Let me know in the comments below what country you're watching this video from. I'd be very, very interested to know. And if you aren't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe because that video is coming tomorrow. Also turn notifications on and I've got much more airdrop content and alpha dropping for you over the next few weeks. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. It means the world to me and I'll see you in the next video. Have a lovely rest of your day. Peace.